Hi, and welcome back. It's been a while since uh, I've done some talking about cinema. Reasons it up. Uh, got to watching the uh, Gunja, the Karnavi girl. I must start off emphatically that it's arguably one of the most disappointing movies I've seen in a long time. The film starts with a very small preface dealing with the evacuation at Kabul, circa 1999. Quickly we go to a typical Indian family. We are siblings, Gunju and her brother. The brother who's uh, unsure believes that his sister has no business to be dreaming, to be a pilot and that her job would have to be one of an actress. The father of the family tells the son that he's been hearing a lot of hogwash from somebody and that he needs to get his head perched. Quick ahead, his little girl wants to become a pilot in fakes. So the entire story is about a lady who never in the first place wanted to be a pilot. This is the story to it. The whole film of about two hours, scripted by Nikhil Malhotra and Sharon Kumar, is a sobbing story, wobbling all its way in telling this entire country that during the 90s, this country was run by a set of male chauvinist armed officers that the rule books were thrown, that people didn't care a damn about sexual equality, that we were the most archaic armed force that did not, that grudged a girl even an inch of her dream to be an Air Force pilot. This is the crux that goes in the making of the film. Was this the intention? It stinks to higher heavens. I thought that this kind of male shopping stories that reverse would celebrate the survivor died with the shelf life of the likes of Meena Kumari and Bala Sinha cinema. Not true. On the other hand, it comes at a time when there's a huge paradox there with us. I remember the Prime Minister of the country during the Karakul episode, was a man who called another Prime Minister, a war Prime Minister of India, Durga. I understand that one swallow doesn't make a summer, and one Prime Minister here, or one lady president there, or even a speaker somewhere, doesn't mean woman women's emancipation in India. No, I agree that women's emancipation is a mirage in this country as of today. But then, we are talking about a hero. We are not talking about somebody with whom God played dice and she became a certain repetitious hero. We are dealing with somebody who fought. Is this the story of grit and determination? No, it is not. Are we talking about armed force tough life? This doesn't come anywhere near Nana Patekas Praha. Is it dealing with woman empowerment? Not even close to Mircha. About woman ambition? Not like the Pogat sisters, Gita and Babita, in Tanya. What are we dealing with? We get this Bollywood star. There's a family that wants to make this film. And we have this lady who, to begin with, wanted to be a pilot, ends up being an Arab officer. Repeatedly rejected and rejected by her colleagues, only on the ground of she being a woman. A part of the story is true. The Indian armed forces have red written all over their face as I have some serious historic explanations to give to the country. She succeeds when the forces are desperate, there is nobody, a new activation is begging to be asked, and when there's nobody around, they say, okay, send her along. When that happens, the amazing success. 
Samek, the film, is not so much about the heroics of this great person. Her heroics are reduced to a few footnotes at the end of the film. This is more about Bollywood than about the Indian Air Force. Sometimes I also got the feeling that this was more in the nature of one of those motivational speeches leaking from the self-help books in a bookshelf than the story of a great lady whose historic contributions to this nation will be long remembered and ever saluted. The saving grace in this film comes from some amazing performances, not surprisingly, the sedate, the ever-reliable, the understated Pankaj Tripathi as the father and the flavor of the season, Angad Bedi as the brother who loves but who cannot believe that his sister can be an equal. Where else? Plainfully, hurtingly, where else will we talk about the Fulham saluting a great fighter and get an actress to play the role who's got Bollywood written all over her from the way she walks, the way she talks, the way she styles her hair. She is Bollywood. And the paradox is complete in at the end of the movie. You want to stand up and salute the woman. There is a song in the background that says, watch out, she is on fire. The paradox screams that can only happen in a chaste 